Mike, uh, given just high expectations for this team from the fan base, things blew up when you guys traded for Julio. What do you have to do to kind of temper those expectations amongst the players day in and day out? Well, I mean, I don't think we have to temper them. We're, it's our jobs to, to continue to raise expectations for our football team, for for our coaching staff, for just the entire organization. You know, that that's what we um, have been charged to do. That's our job. And, um, you know, there's a plan to doing that. You know, I mean, you just don't go from, you know, one point with a roster to where you would be, you know, in the middle of the season. Um, so. Next slide, what do you look for on day one of training camp and what did you see? Well, I mean, I think you just look for, you're trying to continue to coach the fundamentals, the technique that um, is going to be critical. You know, there's the one-on-ones and some of that stuff that we're doing. Uh, organization, you know, that the, the operation is clean and, uh, you know, always looking for effort. You know, so I think we got off to a good start. I think the guys are working with each other. You know, we got to continue to stay off the ground and and be able to compete and do all those things, but take care of each other. When a player is supremely physically gifted, you know, from some of those rare traits that we talk about, does it sometimes take time for them to figure out how to use those traits to their to, to their best advantage? Uh, well, you know, I don't know that. I don't know what the time frame is on that. I just know that. You know, when you are gifted like that and, and you play with, with effort and, and you, you play hard and you play with technique and fundamentals, it allows you to um, to be really good. I think this is playing back Ryan's interview. I don't know. When, when you got O-line, D-line going one-on-ones on a day like today before you build up to Monday, I presume, the fats where they can really be critical, what are you looking for them to work on? Well, that was something that we came up with a couple years ago just to try to take – you know, some of the helmet contacts uh, off these guys, you know, and when we do the studies and, you know, when the league asks, you know, me to be involved in, in some of that stuff, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and, and those are where the numbers are getting real high. It's the O-line, D-line. And so, you know, just trying to take some of the helmet contacts away from it, work with the players, explain what we're trying to do. It's about hand placement. It's about pad level. It's about continuing to move their feet, playing square. Um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 we're doing the best that we can, and it's never going to be perfect, but there's things that Keith's looking for from an offensive line perspective, and there's some things that, that Big T is looking for from a defensive perspective. So hopefully we can continue to coach it and do it and, and take advantage of, of those days where we're not just, you know, uh, lining up every single day and, and going at it. Building off of that, Tierra Tart, he seemed to be pretty impressive during those periods. What are some of the things that you like about him, like maybe his footwork or? I mean, I think the biggest thing for Tier is that after the season ended, you know, he met with, you know, he, he visited with T and he visited with Frank and myself about, about a routine. You know, this was a player that wasn't at a, you know, a, a school, you know, with the, with the type of pedigree as maybe some of these bigger schools. And, and Tier, uh, like a lot of kids that are 19 and 20, they, they, they take a little bit to figure it out. And he was at a couple different schools. Um, and so he built a routine in the off season. And, uh, you know, I think that's a good segue into, you know, what we said was our off season award winners. And that was Anthony Ferkser, uh, that was Nick Westbrook, uh, that was uh, Larell Merchinson and Tier Tart. So, you know, obviously we had a lot of guys that were working hard. We could just go on um, and base that by the guys that were here and, and, and here, you know, the majority of the time. So to Tier's credit and all those guys, uh, he got into a routine, showed up, continued to work, got stronger, worked on his conditioning, and uh, you know hopefully that shows all shows up. Offseason award winners. Um, you know, at a boy, they get to hopefully play, they get better. Um, now we give them a parking spot out front. We give them whatever perks. Stretch is in charge of the uh, the gift basket. <laughs> in the seven on seven, Deshaun looks a little uh, indecisive. How important is it to look at the film to see whether or not that's good defense, the receiver's not getting open, or how much of it is kind of working with him on maybe making quicker decisions? Yeah, I think that's a lot of it when you, you, know, when you look at, um, you know, which group they're going with and whether somebody ran a wrong route or the spacing wasn't correct or the defense actually covered them. And it all comes down to decision making, you know, not throwing the ball late because somebody's covered. You know, not throwing the ball across our body or not just trying, you know, I mean, we're trying to find completions, but then obviously making sure that, uh, 
you know, we're not we're not crazy and we're not reckless with the football down there. So I know that that came up, you know, at least once down there. Um, and, and then we'll get to continue to improve. This is, you know, this being able to get down there in the red zone is good. The windows are tighter. It's going to be like that. Tell the receivers that the, the catches are going to be contested. Uh, so that's a great place to start, you know, on the first day, you know, shorten some of those uh, the distances that we're traveling. You know, this is a lot of the stuff that we do is designed to to take care of the players, but obviously we know how important the red zone is uh, everywhere. How much more important the slot has become, um, I guess, offensively? How important is it that you guys in, in Molden have a guy that almost seems kind of ready-made to step in there and defend, you know, the better receivers that are, that are playing yeah, the slot? Yeah, you know, he's, Elijah is going to have to continue to improve. He, You know, they, they throw a lot of bubbles out there, and he was really good at that, and he played there a lot. It just, you know, we're going to have to keep working him on, on those routes down the field. You know that we've talked about in the past that continue to come up and show up, you know, as either the the, the true slot receiver or sometimes they, they may put guys in there to create some matchups. So, you know, uh, Elijah's um, off to a good start. Had some had some PBUs today. Looked, uh, you know, looked like he did a nice job in the open field tackling drill as well. Um, and and, he, and he's conscientious. And he's smart and he's he's learning. Orders show you to get the opportunity he did last year and. What more do you need to see this year? He, you know, Breon is is very. You know, this is. You know, when you've when you played for four or five teams, you know, you've got to be pretty resilient, um, and and he has a toughness to him that I admire um, and respect. I love his demeanor. Um, I love how he shows up every day, and he's fun to coach. And you know, when, when guys like that come to work ready to go, it's good to see them go out there and. You know, take advantage of opportunities, make some plays, help us out, get excited. How much different is camp, the start of camp now from when you played? And do you think this kind of ramp up period is maybe better in long term for, for players, or how do you judge that? I mean, I can't. I think that there was a ramp. There was a you know a climatization period. I think back when I started or back when I played, and um, I, I think it's great. I think that there's you know a, a fine line uh, between. Not enough, too much, and you know. So we'll get work here with four days. We'll have a day off, come back again with that, you know, and then put pads on, and um, you know, we'll judge and see how it goes. But I think that that, you know, you've heard me say it. There's nothing more important than health and, and safety of our football team. I mean, we, when we win games, it's because our players are out there and they're they're healthy and they're performing. So, you know, whatever that acclimation period is, um, we try to find a balance of that and, and do some drills and things that. That will help them and, and be ready for when we put pads on and, and, and you know tackle in preseason and the regular season. When you get a guy like Jack Rabbit Jenkins that comes out and competes the way he does on every rep, how does that rub off on the younger guys, whether it's Fulton, Molden, or or even you know Caleb Farley and watching practice? I mean, there's a level of competitiveness that's required, you know, to survive in this league, and and Rabbit's done that for for a lot of years, and you know to be in his 30s to go out there and compete. Um, he loves football. He's got an energy to him, and you know he's been a great addition. We have to keep working him in there, keep working, and you know getting him ready to go. But I, I do think that um, you know that can be a great example for some of those younger guys. Is that something that you guys kind of expected, or is it a surprise at how he competes? Because you know some guys. I, mean, I think that we game. knew that the body of work, you know, by the body of work, and you can you can see that on on film. You know that shows up, and then just having get to know him as a person, you know, he's. He's coachable, um, you know, like his demeanor. But again, we're just we're just getting started here. With new players in a unit who are trying to get on the same page, how much of that comes down to what happens back there and X's and O stuff, and how much of it is maybe what's happening in the cafeteria and just team cultures, things like that. Yeah, well, that's all part of building a team. You know, that we talked about that. You know, some of those objectives, you know, for training camp, and then that can be done. You know, hopefully, um, in the meeting room, in the, in the weight room, cold tubs. Locker room, um, you know, we want our we want our meeting rooms, you know, to be inclusive. You know, there, we ask a lot of questions. There's a lot of dialogue, you know, asking players questions, hearing hearing how they see it, and then having communications amongst themselves. So, you know, it has to happen on the field. You know, we'd start that early in the jog through period, you know, where you hear a lot of conversation, and then, you know, I think as as practice wanes a little bit and everybody gets tired, that doesn't quite as sound. You know, as loud. The goal is to try to make that last period, you know, sound as, as loud uh, with as much conversation um, as the first, as those early periods. Mike, how 
You've seen Racy McMath develop as an offensive player just in the short time you guys have had. It's fun to coach, man. He just keeps getting better. I think that um, he's got a unique skill set. He's big. Uh, he's fast. He's coachable. Um, you know, so, so again, you know, I mean, he takes a rep over there in the open field tackle as a receiver, and then, you know, obviously we're projecting him for for a major special teams role. So he goes over there and, you know, is taking reps as in the open field tackle drill on defense and. You know, takes the coaching, doesn't miss a beat, bounces around, and you know, so he's been um, it's been fun to coach. And like I said, he's got a unique skill set just from the size standpoint and, and his speed. Is your special teams role included in returning? Um, you know, right now I wouldn't say that that would be something where we have him targeted, but you know, I think if his, if it expands and he, you know, could could function as a kick returner, he certainly would have the speed and the toughness, you know, to do that. Um, you know, but right now, I, I would say that we're probably not, you know, targeting him at that. Ryan said that the key, and I know you want to spend yesterday on the vaccination, but Ryan told us he got his and that he did it because he thinks it's important to be around the guys. He thinks it's important to be in the lunch rooms, in the meeting rooms, things like that. How important is that kind of for you that even though he's got his own concerns, he ultimately decided that he wanted to be with his teammates? Well, I think what's important is that he felt comfortable enough to make the decision. You know, I think that's the first thing. Um, you know, the big thing that I told, you know, the, the entire team last night was, you know, this isn't necessarily about a vaccine. This isn't about masks. This isn't about social distance. This isn't about a fine or cameras. This is about us being responsible to each other to keep people safe, to keep our family safe, to keep our team safe. Uh, our teammates. And so at the end of the day, whatever your decision is, you have to, to, we all have to live with it, but we have to make sure that it's, we're not making decisions for ulterior reasons, that we're doing it to keep people safe. And that if I choose to get the vaccine, I still have to be conscious of my safety and what I'm doing. And if I don't, then I really have to, then I have a responsibility to, to wear my mask and be socially distant, but function and, and, and do your job here at work. So I think that's the most important thing. It's not, you know, following the protocols so that we don't get the fine. It's following the protocols or getting vaccinated to keep each other safe and take care of one another.